Hugo Chavez was a complicated man. He died, uh, and uh, of course, there are many different organizations that are talking about him today. In America, they're mainly talking about him as a populist, but a man who uh, was corrupt, uh, anti-democratic, and uh, a danger to America. Well, I don't share that opinion. Was there corruption in Venezuela? Yes. Was he uh, a person who clearly had downsides? No question about it. Did I vehemently disagree with him on his treatment of the press? Yes. His treatment of the political opposition from time to time? Yes. W did violence in Venezuela go up? Yes. Did he d sometimes seize land uh, from private owners that I totally disagree with? Yes. He did do that. He's not a saint. He didn't do everything right. He's not just a man of the people, okay? He's a complicated character who had many upsides and many downsides. But now let me give you the complete picture of his upsides as well. So, you know, the New Yorker has written a lot about him, John Lee Anderson in particular. Let me give you a quote that he said. He said, what he has left is a country that in some ways will never be the same, and which other ways is the same Venezuela as ever. One of the world's most oil rich, but socially unequal countries, with a large number of its citizens living in some of Latin America's most violent slums. Now, wait a minute, most of that is true. There are violent slums, and as I've told you now already three times, upsides and downsides to Hugo Chavez. But if you notice, he said, one of the most unequal countries. But that's not true at all. In fact, if you actually look at the numbers, Venezuela, in the Americas, is the second most equal country, meaning e equality of income. Uruguay is number one. Of course, you remember the president of Uruguay lives on about $700 a month, gives away 90% of his money. It's not surprising that he uh, resides over a country or presides over a country uh, that is incredibly equal. Venezuela comes in at number two, though, on the scale at 8.4. Have you already noticed who's at the very bottom? Yeah, that would be us, the United States at 16.0. On this scale, we are twice as unequal as Venezuela. So when our leaders pass away, will the New Yorker and the other uh, publications write, oh, but George Bush and Barack Obama and Ronald Reagan and you name it, presided over great inequality in America, devastating inequality in America, inequality so bad, it was twice as bad as Hugo Chavez. Will they write that? Could it have something to do with the fact that Hugo Chavez thumbed his nose at America and said, I don't, ex I don't ex accept the fact that you are running an imperial country with reign over all of Latin America? Of course it has to do with that. Did it have something to do with the fact that Venezuela is oil rich? Absolutely. Well, here's an oil rich company that will not allow us to appropriate their oil. What is the matter with them? This Hugo Chavez is dangerous. Now, look, I'm telling you as a person who does not believe in communism, I think the Castro administration in Cuba has set back Cuba literally decades. Castro and Chavez were great friends. I do not agree with them. But you have to have a real picture. So now when you look at poverty, let me show you a chart of that. Extreme poverty in Venezuela in 1999, when Chavez first came into office, was at over 23%. Now, it is at 8.5%. It has gone down more than double of what it once was. So now, the fact that they have oil and got more oil during the Chavez years, of course, helped with that. But there's a lot of countries that got oil and didn't give it to the rest of the people. So, I can think of one country, for, for example, called the United States of America, where in some portions, we just give our oil away to the oil companies. Oops, it's a loophole. Turns out in some parts of the Gulf, they don't pay us any royalties, even though it's our oil. We forget that entirely because we're the United Corporations of America, and our government, of course, doesn't work for us. They work for the multinational corporations. But when Hugo Chavez wouldn't listen to the multinational corporations, well, then he had trouble, and he was a dictator, and he was a bad guy. And, you know, they're a little paranoid about America, Chavez was and the Venezuelan government is. Why is that? Well, that's because we helped to organize a coup in 2002 of Hugo Chavez. Now, if they try to do a coup of your government, 
and depose you of your power when you were democratically elected and put you in jail, you might be a little bitter too. Now, at the same time, again, don't just think that he's a saint. Uh, in 2005, he turns more towards socialism. Now, socialism is a complicated word. In America, it sends off alarm bells, but in reality, every government is some sort of mixed socialist and capitalist system. Private industry runs cars, they run sneaker factories, the government runs t uh, schools, police, firemen, and many other things, right? There's a post office, but there's private UPS and FedEx. Public, private, there's a lot of that, it's a mix, right? Now, I don't believe in taking people's land, and Chavez started doing that in 2005, more and more, and it didn't work that well. And remember, he's not, his government is not the only one doing well. Now, he influences other governments in the area, in fact, uh, he uh, wind up, wound up influencing uh, Bolivia, Argentina, Ecuador, Nicaragua, who have more leftist governments now, and by the way, a lot of them have more equality, as you saw, and Brazil, and Brazil winds up having a better mix, if you ask me. Now, why did uh, Hugo Chavez go toward more, more socialism? Well, partly because of Fidel Castro and his relationship and his friendship with him, but he also told the reporter that he had read Victor Hugo's epic novel, Les Miserables. So <laughs> Les Miserables led Hugo Chavez to start appropriating some private land and giving it to the poor. And he said uh, that uh, the, there should be collective farms uh, and that those confiscated uh, territories should be just run by the poor. That didn't work out as well as some had wanted, of course. It's not a good idea. And it's comical that you would read a book and then think, okay, I'm going to go in this direction based on Les Miserables. Uh, so, a complicated man, but I, I'll tell you what, the more left-wing governments of Latin America who have defined the United States and have actually cared about their own people and honestly have struck a better balance than Hugo Chavez did in Venezuela, have shown very good results, including most notably these days in the new powerhouse Brazil. So he has left some questionable marks, but he's also left some good marks in the world, and he should be understood in his full context.